Most people in America are familiar with what is and isn't their lawful rights. There is the rights that the Lord above gives us, if you're a person of faith or spirituality like me, and then there are the laws of America that are sort of founded on the good book. And most of us who have read enough of the law know this. The truth is, as Americans as citizens, we often take our citizenship for granted. We often interfere with other people's rights by accidentally trying to finish their sentences or interfere with answering before them or for them when we don't have the right to do it. We see this all the time throughout the community, literally all the time, both in people who are employees and people who are guests in a store. They're literally walking around with their friends and someone asks them a question and a husband will respond for a wife. I don't know why people do this. We all individually have rights to ourselves. We have rights for ourselves. But there's always a group of people that wants to hit in tandem, hit in a way that harms people. The problem is that they are very liable to the Lord for this attack. They are so liable that they might lose their rights to heaven. You see, everybody always thinks that that concept of 316 just means that you get a full pass on all the sins I've ever made in life, but all the sins that are coming, and that, I don't believe, is still true. I believe it covers the past of our sins up until the point at which we take that vow. But afterwards, God expects us to live our life in a healthy way never working to harm someone, never working to invade someone, never working to disarm someone, never working to create an illegal or immoral record on someone. And the problem is people don't think about that today. They don't think about how their words and their actions on total strangers can impact a life today. I usually like to give the reference to people of the concept of witness protection. You see, if a person's in witness protection, they might have had to change their name to the point that they could be safe. But when people in their families of origin or people in their friendships of origin don't get this and see them, they can put them at risk. And when they give out information that's not their lawful right to talk about, to have, to hold, to do anything with, they hurt people. And those people get hurt. We've seen a lot of films in the world today about how that works, about how people have to go in hiding from the immoral and emotional people that never seem to let go. But here's the deal. Sometimes the people that don't let go have done nothing wrong other than follow the Lord's wishes for them. A person who is warped is going to send you all sorts of warped crap. But someone who cares for you might mail you a few things to just say, Hey, let's get back together. Let's stop that. Let's stop what's going on here. Let's remove ourselves from the victim's mentality as I'm a victim here when you're really not. You participated in someone's life and you literally got so close and so intimate that they fell in love. And that's the truth. Now, there are other types of people who like to pretend they're in love with people, and that's also not well. In life, we have moments of time to speak what is really going on in our life, but are we telling the truth? Are we only telling our version of the truth? Or are we only telling our side? Because if we looked at things from heaven's view, if we looked at things from God's view, if we looked at things from the three sides of a perspective, then we might have a different view of both our life and what happened. You see, when a person is looking from God's view, he looks down and goes, okay, what's the goal here? Is the goal to restore the relationship to healthy boundaries, or is the goal to destroy the relationship because other people don't think it's healthy? You see, the problem is other people have no rights to God. You see, they have rights to God individually, but they don't have the right to play God in someone's life. They don't have the right to use their version of God to tell someone how to live their life, and they don't have the right to use their concept of what God makes to destroy a life. And this is where we run into trouble because there's always some Christian writer who wants rights person, if you will, someone who's on the right end of the right extreme of Christianity that wants to say that what someone is and what someone does is not a part of Christianity. And that just is obviously not true. Because if that was true, then it would never long, no longer exist. You see, God can be God in that construct. But if you insist that you know God, then you've just proven that you don't know God. Because God says this all the time. You don't know the world that I create. You don't know the ways that I built. You don't know the path that I am on for God, but that's the truth. You don't know someone's path if you're not with them 24-7. You don't know what they've gone through if you've not been with them 7-11. But the truth is, in your lifetime, you have to be willing to accept that when you've done something that harms someone, you're fully liable, and you're liable to God. In America, we have rights. 
and those rights says I have the right to speak for me and I have the right to defend me under liberty and I have the right to defend my rights underneath the international human rights law and I have the right to defend myself underneath medical privacy law and I have the right to have my own say in every way without you trying to aid or abed someone who's trying to harm me the problem is the people that are trying to harm us rarely are visible to the common person they really don't think about that because they don't think how quickly people can fall or fail and the truth is people fail every day they also fall every day away from God which is why we have people running around and we think they're odd but whether we think they're odd or whether we're just running away because we are too fearful to be in love in that way that's a difference you see God produces love in the soul and if you love someone once you could probably love them again if you cared for someone one time you could probably care for them again it's not fair to say that person changed in the relationship when you were participating fully on in that relationship. And I promise you, God is not pleased if you put up your hands, if you've thrown up your fists, or if you've simply called police because you didn't want to deal with this. The reality is you built that. You built that situation with your words, with your actions, with your touch, with your love, with whatever you did to create and incite that interest in that person. But the truth is in life that you can win if you like, you can lose if you want, but openly what, what happens before men is not always what happens before the Lord.